Ball State Sportslink's Be A Fan is driven by Muncie Nissan. Hello and welcome to another edition of Ball State Sportslink's Be A Fan Show, driven by Muncie Nissan. I'm your host, Josh Blessing. Well, this month we'll take a look at twin scissors on the soccer team, four football players from the same high school each beating the odds, and we'll also catch up with women basketball coach Kelly Packard with much, much more. Well, let's get things started. Well, SportsLink continued its yearly 12 and 12 series profiling each of the men's basketball players. Here's a look at the newest addition to the team, freshman guard Zeke Chapman. Ball State came up real late, and I just kind of wanted to find the best fit for me, so I came out and visited and just fell in love with the campus and everything. And they definitely stress like an importance on team chemistry and as well as obviously academics, and I think that's kind of kind of what got me here. My dad probably my, my dad used to play basketball a long time ago, so ever since I was little, he just kind of put the ball in my hand. <laughs> it's it's obviously helped. He's been there ever since I was little, kind of teaching me and, and showing me how to how to be the best player I could. But um, I mean, now that I'm here, I obviously want to try to make a name for myself. Well, Zeke Chapman brings shooting ability. He's got deep range on his jump shot, and he's got a great basketball IQ. So hopefully he'll get an opportunity to play at both guard positions and impact the team. We have a great, great group of guys, and, and uh, going to Canada, I think, definitely helped, helped us get closer. Getting able to play those four games and, and get some wins early under our belt. Definitely going back to play Arizona in our opener, I think, is uh, the one I'm most looking forward to. I'll be able to play in front of my friends and, and family, and, and I'm really excited about it. I'd say my role is kind of just to, to come in and, and play minutes when, when guys need them, and uh, obviously hit shots when I'm open and, and not turn the ball over. I mean, obviously my personal goals for this year would definitely just be to make, a, make an impact my freshman year and, and play some like meaningful minutes. And as far as my career at Ball State, I, I want to win the MAC and, and go to the tournament. Well, although that women's volleyball season is now over, one of the many bright spots of the season was outside hitter Kylie Baker. Katie Hawkins and Shane Moore tell us about the sophomore's journey to Ball State. Hi, my name is Kylie Baker. I'm an outside hitter, number five on the Ball State women's volleyball team, and I'm from Plainfield, Illinois. I was originally recruited from Dave Booz, who was the previous coach um, from Steve, and he recruited me when I was a sophomore, and I verbally committed as a junior, so I want to say the spring of my junior year, and I just love the fact that the program, you know, was on the verge of becoming a big-time program. At home, I live with Katie and Jackie, so I obviously mesh with them more than you know everybody else but I think that even though you know you everybody thinks we might get sick of volleyball like we have one at the house and we'll pepper in the hallway like we will <laughs> and it's just like three different personalities combined but it just makes like a really fun household I would have to say that the biggest challenge would be just kind of juggling everything around you know you travel you're on the road it's stressful you know getting your papers and you know just kind of balancing out and making teachers happy I absolutely love playing for Steve. I think that, you know, being a player, you always want to be encouraged, but at the same time taught. And I think that he has a perfect balance of that. Yeah, Patty Baker is the name of a girl that I coached many, many years ago. And when Kylie came to Ball State, just the memory of always coaching Patty Baker, I kind of gave Kylie that nickname, Patty, just because it always came to my mind when I thought Baker in volleyball. Steve has a lot of different names for me. He has Patty, Bam Bam Baker, Patty Cake, regular Bam Bam, Trisha Baker, he'll call me actually a full name, but his favorite is like, you know, when like a, some, you, like your child gets in trouble and some, you know, Kylie Elizabeth, because Elizabeth's my middle name, he always says Patricia. My two years here, he's yet to call me Kylie. I and mean, he probably has me programmed in his phone as Patricia. I just have this bad feeling it's gonna stick with me for the rest of my life. Well, the women's basketball team is led by fourth-year head coach Kelly Packard. The Cardinals entered December having to play seven games before they even make it to conference play. Chris Wrinkle and myself were able to catch up with Coach Packard and get her outlook on the season. 
Chris Rank alongside head women's basketball coach Kelly Packard. Coach, a nice uh, opening to the season here at exhibition against uh, St. Joe's. Uh, how do you feel your team played? You know, there were some highlights. I would pull out Brittany Carter, a freshman that started as a highlight, uh, played with tremendous poise, which isn't easy to do when you, you know, you roll out the uniform for the first time with fans in the arena. Um, you know, obviously, there aren't very many teams in America that are polished on November 3rd. Um, you know, I look down at the rebounding category. That's one that's sticking with me. That's a team with our size that we should have out-rebounded them significantly, and significantly is not by seven. So uh, that's of concern, something that we're going to need to address. All right, now last year we saw a lot of freshmen play very well down the stretch. Uh, what can we expect from this year's freshman class? Well, you know, it, you look at who I started tonight. Two freshmen, two sophomores, one senior. Um, our youth is very, very talented, and the more I can play them earlier, and I did that last year, though it was really difficult at times, started Brandy Woody every single game of her freshman year. I'm seeing the benefits of that now. You look down, and Brandy has 11 assists to two turnovers. I mean, that was an investment that we chose to make in her a year ago. So uh, what's something that you really look for your team to do well throughout the entire season that uh, really is going to speak to how many wins you get down the stretch? You know, with the departure of, of uh, Emily Maggart and Tyronda Benning, it was a lot of statistics. And so the only way we're going to recover that is with an effort like this where you're seeing uh, a lot of people approaching double figures and, and many people contributing. Well, as most of us already know, in the state of Indiana, basketball is virtually everything. But across the border in Ohio, football is king. Thousands of high schoolers across the state are involved in the sport, but as Ben Wagner and Chris Wrinkle tell us, for the four Ball State players from Glenville, football is more than a game. It's a way of life. And this story presented by WMDH. Looking for Gibson, he's got him. Gibson will be down at the 40-yard line of Indiana. And it's taken down! A sack for Travis Freeman. And picked off by Ball State. Let's get a number. I think it was Pinkston. Ripped up at the line. He doesn't have it. Aaron Morris again. For Ball State football fans, these are four household names. Players who embody hard work, dedication, and passion. Although they serve different roles on the football field, they all represent the same neighborhood. Growing up in Cleveland, you know, uh, it's a lot of uh, it's a lot of stuff going on in Cleveland. It was rough sometimes, but it was good growing up. I mean, I stayed outside of Cleveland, so I really wasn't uh, down by Glenville. All the negativity you can think about: drugs, money, sex, fighting, killing. I've I've seen it all. I'm all surrounded by that. You just gotta have the right mindset. You know, the whole time you're in there is to get out. Anything that I can latch on to to getting out of this area is what I was looking for. And um, Football, football gave me that opportunity. This wasn't the first time football served as an outlet for young men in the inner cities of Cleveland. In 1997, Ted Yin Sr. was named head football coach at Glenville High School. He quickly turned the Tar Blooders into a football powerhouse, notably coaching Ohio State greats Troy Smith and Ted Yin Jr. Glenville became known for its speed and athleticism throughout the city, but for others outside of Cleveland, their identity remained unknown. A lot of people always ask me, what is a tar blooder? Tar blooder means to be a hardcore. You work till you pass out. There's a lot of high expectations. You sweat till it's blood. When you want to quit, just think about the people before us. Ted Ginn, Troy Smith. That's Glenville. One of the best teams in the state. Anything's possible. You play for something bigger than yourself. It means a lot. For Glenville, the recipe for success was clear. Ted Ginn Sr. Not only did he impact his players on the field, but off the field, he changed lives. Anytime you pit the success of other individuals before your success, that's remarkable if you ask me. Um, that's like a father to me. I never had no father figure growing up. My mother was my mother and father, but Coach Gann was my father at the time because he kept me out of trouble, kept me in class, and kept me on the right track. He's all about life before football. I mean, he cares about football, but he's all about getting you into college so you can um, take care of your family one day have money one day, so we don't have to struggle. He's always looking to help out the players in any way, shape, or form, like on the field, off the field, mostly off the field, because he want to uh, get our life going in the right direction. Glenville saved my life. Coach Ginn saved my life. Um, I don't know where I'd be without him, honestly. 
All four players would continue their journey at the collegiate level. One by one, a connection would be made, and a pipeline was created. Their choice? Ball State. Me and Toriel were good friends in high school. So when, when Ball State came up, I had no problem with it because it was nothing but positive things coming from the Ball State area. I know Cincinnati had offered me, uh, Michigan was talking to me, but I wanted to go to school and play with Travis and Toriel, so we had to get that pipeline going. I had a couple other BCS offers, but Travis Freeman and Torrey Gibson and Jason Pinkson, I knew they were here. Ball State was just willing to leave my head, and I guess that was just meant for me to just be here. It just feels so good that you're playing with your team again. Sometimes I wish I was on D because that's where they all at and I miss it so much. And sometimes I look to them and I'm like, wow, like we actually went to the same college. You're talking about coming from a community where nothing positive is even happening. And we're all in school getting our education and playing and doing the things that we love. Although their playing days at Glenville are through, the Tarblooder mission is never complete. Like those who came before them, a Tarblooder plays for others completely selfless, playing to give others a chance and follow the path to a better life. For Ball State Sports Link, I'm Chris Rankel. Fantastic work, guys. Well, to see more stories like this and more on Ball State football, visit our new website at ballstatesports.com slash sportslink. Well, Sportslink continues its In Focus series as we profile men's and women's swimming and diving. For junior Corey Vormore, swimming has been a part of her family long before she arrived at Ball State. Shane Moore has the story. I'm Corey Vormore. I'm a junior and I swim for Ball State University. My mom and my aunt were both swimmers uh, their whole lives. And my cousin Taylor, um, she was kind of like my role model throughout my younger years and she was a swimmer. So she's kind of who got me started. When I started, it was kind of like a leisure, fun, you know, go three times a week and see what it's like. But after about two years, when I was nine, um, I started competing um, at the state level. And um, from then on, it was, it was serious. I chose Ball State at the end of my senior year, and it was a decision um, made because I want to become a teacher. So Ball State is a great school for education, and I was able to swim here at a Division I school, so that's why I chose Ball State. My most memorable moment in swimming would be last year's MAC Championships. Um, our team had a great meet and we still got 8th place, but our team has turned around so much and it was just a great experience for all of us and I had three personal best times, which is all I can ask for. So, My biggest inspiration in swimming would be my mom. Um, she's been my coach since I was younger, right when I started at 7. And she would take me to every swim meet on the weekend. She would spend all day, every day at those meets with me. Um, she's always pushing me to do my best. She never pushed me to do something I didn't want to do, but she was always a positive influence on me and I appreciate everything she's done for me. Before I graduate from Ball State, I would like to continue um, having faster times in the breaststroke races and just continue to have a great time and develop friendships that I'll have for the rest of my life. I think swimming is a very important part of my life. It's not only taught me about uh, how to become a better coach or a teacher, it's taught me about life in general. You need to work hard to get what you want and you need to have time management skills and all of these things that I've learned throughout swimming apply to life in other ways. So it's taught me a lot. Well, senior swimmer Mark now doesn't have the body type of a typical collegiate swimmer. However, he still has had his fair share of success while at Ball State. Get to know more about him in this story produced by Paul Weller. I'm Mark now, I'm a senior and I swim breaststroke. When I started swimming uh, my freshman year of high school, we didn't really have any breaststrokers, so that's just what I got put in. Uh, I don't have the body shape to do breaststroke, but once you do it for four years, you're kind of stuck. I have a lot of brothers and sisters. I'm the youngest of six. I have three brothers and two sisters. I'm also the smallest at 6'2", 190, so I get picked on quite a bit, but you learn to deal with it and we all love each other. I pray before each meet. I have to do the same stretches. If I don't, I just feel like I haven't stretched at all. And then I have to talk to the guy next to me and I have to say the same thing each time, you know. Just the little luck charms that every athlete seems to have. 
I have majors in biochem and chemistry and minors in astrophysics and biology. I just love science. I love being able to find one concrete answer and not write about my feelings all day. Um, it's what I'm good at and I love to know how things work. Right from the get-go you get on campus and you get to meet uh, about 20 guys and 30 or 40 girls that become your friends and your family for the next four years. Uh, that's a huge thing. Um, also, you know it's something that's always going to be there. Uh, classes change, girlfriends change, jobs change. You're always going to have practice. You're always going to have a team you can go back on. And it's, it's a nice sense of uh, reliability. Well, for Hannah and Ellie Chaddock, they have a special connection that helps them on the soccer field. They're not only sisters, but they're best friends on top of that and are basically inseparable. Joel Bragg, Tim Keene, and Kevin Thurman have more on the two's close bond in this story presented by Robin's Apparel. The transition from high school to college is difficult for anyone, especially for Hannah and Ellie Chaddock, twins from Overland Park, Kansas, 560 miles away from Muncie. I mean, it made the transition a lot easier just because I have somebody that I know here, unlike a lot of other girls. It's great having my mom or dad come up, um, just having them both um, support me and knowing that they're cheering me on on the sidelines is just um, a great feeling. As twins, Hannah and Ellie have been inseparable since birth. But that doesn't even begin to describe their connection. We basically do everything together. All of our classes are the same, so we go to class together, we study together, we do our homework together, we eat together. Like, I can tell her anything as we're my brothers. I can talk to, I just don't feel like I can talk to them about everything. It's like having another one of you um, I mean, not all twins are as close or as much alike as we are, but um, it's different, I guess, but not for me, obviously. Their connection extends outside the classroom and onto the soccer field, where both have been successful. Coming back to school, everyone's congratulating you and, like, just seeing how great of a season we had and I mean we did have a great season and what a way to end it by winning the state championship. It was really cool like I've never felt anything like it. It was, I can't even explain it just being there it was awesome it really was. Hannah came to me and said mom I need to talk to you and I you know of course said sure and she said hands me a piece of paper that says she's been nominated for the Kansas Gatorade Player of the Year. And I just looked at her and I'm like, oh my gosh, that's, that's awesome, that's great. And I said, I am so proud of you, congratulations. And she starts to cry. I looked at her and I said, what's wrong? And she couldn't talk. And then I, we just sat there for a minute as the tears were streaming down her cheeks. And I said, I know what's wrong and I said, you're upset because Ellie wasn't also nominated. And honestly, we know that Hannah could have never done it without Ellie. When it came to the decision of where to go to college, there was no question that the sisters would stay together. We visited our junior year in high school and right when we got here, it was just like a beautiful campus and the coaches were great when we met them. They were so welcoming. We felt that both of them could offer um, definitely an enhancement to the Ball State program. And uh, one of the things that impressed me was that not only they were great athletes on the field, but they're also quality off the field. No matter what the future holds, the Chaddock sisters will always have each other. For Ball State SportsLink, I'm Kevin Thurman. Well, there's no question the cross-country team had a turnaround season. For Coach Randy Heisler and the Cardinals had several bright spots, one of them being junior Mary-Kate Mellon. Chris Rinkle had, has more in this story presented by Table X. 
My name is Mary Kate Mellon and I'm a junior and I run cross country and track. I started running in seventh grade. I joined the cross country team um, mostly because my dad said I looked like a runner and mostly I just liked it because I was good at it and I mean you don't work that hard in middle school you kind of it's just fun. This was the last school I visited. It was like the fifth school I'd visited and I, I don't know I loved it here. I I wanted to run here. I just was walking around. I came here with my dad and I said, I just really want to go here. What's changed is our coaching. Like we were in shape and so we're all doing a lot better. And I don't think I'm the most talented girl on the team at all. Our pack is so close that I'm just barely our top runner. When you have a team, like in not only in races, in practice, like we're so close together. So we push each other so hard. And so then we're in better shape and then in races, it's. It's more motivating to try to catch your teammates and to run with them than to try to catch some other team. So just being so close, I, I'm usually behind two of the runners for half the race. So just trying to catch my other two teammates is a lot of my motivation. It's been a really good one to help me to race to the best of my ability. In the future, um, yeah, I think if you're a runner, you're always going to be a runner. Um, we all love doing it, and even if we complain about it at practice, we enjoy it, and I'll probably just, you know, run for fun. Well, typically here at SportsLink, we focus on, well, sports. For the, but for this next tour, we go outside the realm of Ball State sports and into the Muncie community. Shane Moore and Joe Saylor give you this inside look at the 10th annual Indiana SWAT Challenge. My name is Amanda Kirby. I go by Mandy. I'm 29 years old. Um, I've been on the police department for about two and a half years. I was a paramedic for quite a while, about eight years, and worked with the police um, hand in hand and just decided from there that I wanted to actually be a police officer. Um, something I kind of always thought about, but that sold me on it. So. so this was my first year in the SWAT Challenge. They've had it several years now, but this was the first time that Ball State put a team into it. My favorite event was the obstacle course. It's the very last event at the end of the SWAT challenge that everybody goes through. You compete as a team, you have to help each other through different obstacles, but it's just a lot of fun. There's no shooting involved or anything like that. It's just purely physical and everybody comes out to watch it. Everybody's family comes out to watch it. Girlfriends, boyfriends, kids, and it's a really good time. I think that there's always good um, sportsmanship between all the teams. I feel like Everybody's out there encouraging everyone. I don't feel like there's any sort of um, arch rivalry or anything like that. It's more um, camaraderie than anything. Being the only girl on the team was a lot of fun. It's always a little scary when you're the only female out there, but I had a really good group of guys that expected the same thing out of me that they did out of each other. So I really felt like I was a part of the team. I wasn't treated any differently. I felt like our team did really well. Um, I think we all had good and bad days. Um, we While watching a live broadcast on TV, one doesn't think about what goes on behind the scenes to make the broadcast possible. Here at SportsLink, we put in hours and hours just to make sure the broadcast runs smoothly. Tim Keen gives you a behind the scenes look at SportsLink's first broadcast of the year against Miami, presented by Fox College Sports. Muncie, Indiana on the campus of Ball State University. Welcome inside Worthen Arena. We've got volleyball for you tonight. It's the Cardinals taking on the Miami Red Hawks. Hello, everybody. I'm Pat Boylan, joined by Josh Blessing. And, Josh, these are two teams that are coming in on very different sides of the spectrum. For Ball State, it's pretty simple. They need to jump out to an early lead. Miami struggles when they far, fall far behind. Second, they need to pr protect the nest. Just over the net, and that'll do it! An ace on the final point, and Ball State beats Miami. They take set number four, 25-23. They win 3-1. to 
Well, if you want to stay on top of all the happenings for your Ball State athletics, be sure to head on over to Facebook and like us on Facebook. And you can also follow us on Twitter at BSU SportsLink. But before we go, here's a look at some of the upcoming events in the Ball State sports world, including Ball, State's, Ball State SportsLink's first live broadcast there you see December 1st. Women's basketball hosts Detroit Mercy, Mercy on December 4th. Women's basketball yet again, another home game in Worthen Arena. They host Stetson. That game will be on SportsLink Radio. Then men's basketball host Butler. Men's and women's swimming and diving host Michigan State. And women's basketball on December 18th will host Valparaiso. That game yet again will be on SportsLink Radio. Well, that's all the time we have for this month's edition of To Be a, a, Be a Fan. Be sure to head on, on over to BallStateSports.com slash SportsLink for even more Ball State sports coverage. You can also catch us on WIPB, Comcast Indiana, and Fox College Sports. For our producers, Paul Weller and Katie Hawkins, and all of us here at Ball State SportsLink, I'm Josh Blessing, and we'll see you next month.